Sustainable development is what we have to do. We have to do within the realm of what is possible while ensuring that the next generation's rights towards better quality life, better quality uh, uh, environment are not deteriorated. Now, within that, are we doing within that much framework? The answer is no, an absolute no. And if you take each single example and see where we stand, take the example of water. We have all, some of us here would have traveled to foreign countries, some of us probably haven't, but some of us would have traveled. And whenever we go to a foreign country and stay in a hotel, what do we do when we want to drink water? 90% chances are off-late bottled water has become more common, but earlier you would go to a bathroom and pick up a glass of water because that's the only place where there is a tap and you'd pick up a glass of water and happily drink it. Why? There is absolute confidence that this water is clean. Nobody has told us. Nobody has put a boat there that this is drinking water. It's just that there is confidence that this water is clean. How many of us are able to do that with the water in, a, in India? The answer is zero. How many of us are able to drink the water supplied by municipality claiming as potable water? Again, the answer is zero. All of us have RO plants after the municipal water supply. And then after the RO plant, we end up boiling the water and cooling it if we have small chills at home. Why is this? Because there is absolute no confidence on the civic services that are being rendered that this water is portable. Half of us dare not bathe with it. Half of us have softeners at the top of our house before we take bathe with it. And that's because there is lack of confidence. And lack of confidence is not untrue. 90% of the water delivered in India is not up to the portable water standards or bathing water standards. And that's the reality. If this is the case of water, what is the case of sewage? Less than 30% of Indian sewage is connected through a sewer line which takes it to a common location. 70% of the sewage is just left to drains. And the open drains go and join nalas, and the big nalas go and join water bodies, and the water bodies go and join the rivers, and the rivers go and join the sea. 70% of the sewage in the country doesn't get formal collection system. It goes through the informal collection system. The remaining 30% which gets collected is so delivered to an effluent treatment plant or a sewage treatment plant that none of this gets treated to the inland water discharge standards. We cannot meet the discharge standards because all of these are designed old activated sludge processes with uh, simple aeration tanks and, and they are loaded with two, three times the hydraulic load that it can actually handle because that's the quantum of sewage generated. If you are designed a plant for three million liters per day, you're delivering eight million liters of sewage. So instead of giving it a two hour time in the tank, you get half an hour time. Within that, you cannot treat it and therefore the result is it comes out as it goes in. So there is no treatment that is happening. So most of the water is in that shape. Neither the drinking water is in the drinkable shape nor the sewage is in the treated sewage shape. So water is in an extremely bad shape. Take the case of air. Today's morning, every newspaper in the country is talking about the air pollution of Delhi or even formula. Has it added to uh, reducing the pollution or has it added to increasing the pollution? There are reports filed in NGT telling that pollution levels have gone up or hasn't made any change. Is that a reality? Is that not a reality? Is another big question. Now, just again comparing, going back to the global standards and comparing, you go to any well-developed, good country where pollution levels in ambient air are low, you walk down for four or five hours in the streets and come back to your hotel or to your office, do you actually find the need for washing your face? The answer is no. And you, we try to walk out in any city in India for two to three hours and come back. We end up finding a big need to wash the face or take a bath depending on how sweaty the day was. And why is this? The result is because the ambient air in our country is substantially high level of dust. And so when you see a sun ray, you actually find a ray of dust. And why do we find that ray of dust? It's all the suspended dust which is hanging in the air. And when we are walking through, this suspended dust is sticking to our face, sticking to our every open part of the body. And this open part of the body gets so suffocated that when you come back, you find the need to wash your face. And that's because as against 10 micrograms per normal cubic meter, we end up in cities having 150 to 200 micrograms per cubic meter of dust in the ambient air, and we are trying to solve this such a huge ambient air problem. Will this such a huge ambient air problem be solved with small steps, like, like few reduction in cars, or will it increase because of the Balsua dump which is on fire? None of these will contribute to a significant change. The number could be five micrograms change because of these. 
there has to be a series of long term initiatives and steps taken there has to be reduction in pollution coming from vehicles there has to be reduction in pollution coming from uh, uh, industries there has to be reduction in use of coal power plants and move towards gas based power plant there has to be change in use of coal uh, for steel industries to furnace oil and diesel there has to be change in the agri practices where we burn uh, uh, crop at the end of the season there are and there has to be unpaved roads have to become paved there are 10000 steps that have to be done to ensure that the air quality reaches 10 as against the 200 one step of odd even vehicles or one step of burning the uh, uh, balsawa dump will not change any situation in 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 an overnight uh, condition it is going to be very 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 long term steps are these good steps these are beautiful steps the steps that are taken by the delhi government are appreciable they will surely lead to at least a thinking process that we need to reduce this air pollution but the reality is in this country as of today we haven't yet put the tangible steps which will reduce the air pollution to the desired levels within meaningful time it's going to take substantially long time and all of us have to put every single step to make this happen over a period of time now look at the solid waste which is the third pillar of this same environment our situation is again pretty pretty bad we in india generate approximately 200000 tons of municipal solid waste every day out of these 200000 tons of municipal solid waste it will be surprising to note less than 20000 tons find some form of scientific disposal whether that scientific disposal is good enough or not will come to the next level of question these these 20000 are anyway going through 20 multiple cases there is a case on the uh, 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 jindal's power plant there are cases on many many other out of these 20000 the question is what is happening to this 180000 this 180000 tons of municipal solid waste every day is being dumped across the road side right next to canals because that is the only place where people will find you can dump those are the places where government will have uh, land so you have one here in balswa you have one in okla in the uh, mumbai we have seen the devnar dump uh, the mulund dump the kanjur dump chennai has perangodiyur so like this every city has multiple dumps and in each of these dumps you will find that the quantity of waste will range from 10 to 50 million tons of waste is lying in these dumps now what are we talking about in terms of changing this to an overnight uh, uh, development how long is it going to take for the country to move the rules have surprisingly come in the year 1998 2000 there have been deadlines that have been created the last of the deadline for every municipal corporation to be totally compliant was over on december 31st 2003 that was the outer deadline for every municipal corporation to be 100% compliant and i can confidently in writing say that every single municipality every single corporation in this country is in violation of the msw rules today no municipality or corporation can raise up and say i am in total compliance there may be partial compliance to one component but to the msw rules every single municipality is non compliant this is after 13 years of the last deadline has been passed and the reality is less than 10% is compliant less than 10 it probably is in the order of 3 to 4% 5% but i am giving it a benefit of doubt by already telling it 10% is the uh, uh, level of compliance if you look at the hazardous waste generated by industries much better much better situation out of the 7 million tons of waste generated about 2 million tons is being recycled and 1 million ton is being treated and disposed of there is still another 4 million tons which is being disposed of illegally so that's a 40% compliance so we are much better off in terms of the industrial hazardous waste now comes the medical waste the hospital waste which is the syringes uh, scalpel blades cotton bandage amputated body parts blood pus sputum some of these medical waste the compliance level is much better roughly about 900000 beds of inpatient medical service whatever waste is generated out of the 1.5 million beds is being scientifically treated and disposed so we are here we closer to 60 65% now if we try to see why this gradation municipal waste is less than 10% industrial waste is close to 40% medical waste is closer to 60 70% the simple theory that polluter pays which is global theory is able to be applied better in a medical waste compared to hazardous waste compared to municipal waste as a result of that we are seeing that if you can identify the polluter 
you can actually try and see how you can improve the situation. Hospitals are easily identifiable. A hospital cannot hide themselves. Every hospital is on the main road. So there are people who are able to identify, here is a hospital, is generating waste, please take care of it. Half the industries are identifiable, half are still in cottage stage, half are still in small and medium who cannot be easily identified, therefore it is that much more difficult. Municipalities are very identifiable, but the problem is the polluter actually is the individual, we. And we are not identifiable. Though we are all visible, we are not identifiable. We are millions and trillions of people who cannot be easily identified and tracked and geotagged and charged. As a result of that, who's going to pay for this? Why should I pay? I wasn't hitherto paying. One corporation has to suddenly start incurring a huge cost, has become a bottleneck. And, and typically, you go to any city, the municipal corporation is a larger body than the pollution control board. The pollution control board, who's the enforcing authority, has a subordinate officer who cannot talk to the municipal commissioner and tell you, hey, you're not compliant because he's his boss somewhere in his career. So the chances are the member secretary of a pollution control board will never be able to uh, issue a show cause or a direction to the commissioner of a municipal corporation as a result of which municipal solid waste implementation is probably at its worst ever situation and probably will therefore take much, much longer, despite the fact that huge grants are there. There is Swachh Bharat grants. Hitherto Swachh Bharat, there were the JNNURM grants. There are multiple options of funding. But despite that, the reality will remain that it will take 10 more years for India to be compliant on municipal solid waste. And then we come to the electronic waste. Again, a, 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 a new dimension, new era that is coming up. All of us have grown up in a, a, in a, in a society where, where electronic waste never existed. We never saw electronic waste because we never saw electronics. There were no electronics in this country. All of us lived on mechanical and uh, civil structures. We never lived in an electronic society at all. In my childhood, having a transistor already was a super luxury. And that was always an imported transistor because there were no domestic transistors manufactured. There were no domestic radios manufactured. A, a cordless phone was always imported. There was no cordless phone manufactured in the country. From that situation, suddenly overnight, out of the 120 crore people, 90 crore people are mobile subscribers. Now, this leads to a huge quantum of electronic waste generation is the thinking. But the reality is all of us here would have in the last 15 years changed about 10 mobile phones roughly. The chances are not one would have been dumped. We wouldn't have put even one of this mobile into the dump. I may have given it to my wife. My wife may have given it to her driver. Her driver may have given it to his wife. Now, it is still in the value chain of uh, usage. And the worst part is if it is not in that shape, it's broken cannot be handed over to anyone, the good chance is that my broken cell phone will still be in my cupboard. The charger of the broken cell phone, which cannot be used for any other purpose, would also be very likely in the same cupboard. And when I clean it, all of these will come out and I'll again put them in another cupboard, but I will not throw it because from a mind, we have not yet accepted electronic as a waste and it's going to take that much more time for many of us to accept. And this applies not only to cell phones. Cell phones are an example. I might have changed five laptops, four refrigerators, 10 television sets, 20 grinders. Take any electronic item for that matter of fact. Our mind is yet to accept electronic material as a waste. Electronic material continues to be... Uh, electronic material continues to be a matter of value for us and not a waste and it, it requires to be addressed uh, much better. So, so, so talking about the environmental services opportunity and the environmental services situation, as I said, we don't have confidence on drinking water. We don't have confidence on sewage being treated. We cannot think of air pollution levels to come to meaningful levels. It will take multiple steps to recover this. Municipal solid waste is absolutely non-compliant. Less than 5,000, 10,000 tons in the country is being managed. Industrial waste is 30% compliant. Medical waste is about 60 to 70% compliant. Electronic waste, we haven't yet accepted it as waste. We still believe it is a raw material and a value add and still needs to get into the value chain. Then comes the recycling, which is another important step of the sustainable uh, 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 environmental services. And if you look at recyclables, we are one of the best in the world in terms of recycling. The simple answer, all of us would have bought Horlicks Boost or one of these uh, chocolate items for milk mixing. And if you realize 90% of the